Hi, welcome. Today we're going to talk about splenomegaly, an enlargement of the spleen. We wondered why this organ can balloon up like it's preparing for a bodybuilding competition? Then join me as I give you some beautiful quick tips while I unravel the causes, symptoms, diagnosis and treatment. And hey, if you find this discussion relevant or intriguing as a plot twist in a medical drama, then go ahead and subscribe. Give me that support. Let's get started. The normal size of the spleen is approximately 12 by 7 centimeters and the spleen usually weighs less than 200 grams. So splenomegaly refers to an enlargement of the spleen and this is characterized by a craniocaudal measurement exceeding 12 centimeters. So this is going to be the craniocaudal measurement. Okay, so in summary, splenomegaly refers to a splenic craniocaudal measurement within the range of 12 to 20 centimeters. On the other hand, massive splenomegaly is defined as a spleen length greater than 20 centimeters right here, okay, and the weight exceeding 1,000 grams. Other authors may also define it as when the spleen crosses the midline or if the spleen reaches the iliac crest or even if the weight exceeds 1,500 grams, but we would like to make our definition much more sensitive. So we're going to stick to this one here. Typically, the spleen is not palpable, except maybe in very slender individuals. The spleen has very important functions, and this may include clearing senescent red blood cells. It produces immunoglobulins. It also helps mature and store important immune cells such as T and B lymphocytes, as well as eliminating microorganisms. So here I'm going to give you some tips on hypersplenism. It is common to see splenomegaly and hypersplenism used interchangeably, but they are actually distinct conditions. So while patients with hypersplenism typically exhibit splenomegaly, not everyone with splenomegaly will experience hypersplenism. I know this sounds confusing, so let me present it in another way. So we are saying that patients who have hypersplenism have splenomegaly. But patients who have splenomegaly do not always have hypersplenism. I hope this uh, clarified that. So hypersplenism refers to a state where the spleen excessively, that is inappropriately, removes or destroys blood cells such as red and white blood cells, as well as platelets. So we do have the red blood cells right here. Okay. We also have the white blood cells and the platelets. And this is removed by the spleen inappropriately. And so the result is going to be various forms of cytopenia. Those cells are going to be reduced in the bloodstream. Okay, so the bone marrow response can vary, appearing normal or hyperplastic. Furthermore, it is very important to note that a splenectomy okay, can effectively restore blood cell counts in those that have been affected by hypersplenism. All right, so let's try to make the learning process more manageable as well as memorable, okay? And to simplify the understanding of the causes of splenomegaly, I have created a helpful medical mnemonic, RICH. And in this framework, R represents reactive splenomegaly, right there. And this captures a range of infectious conditions such as malaria, typhoid fever, tuberculosis, endocarditis, and sepsis. Reactive splenomegaly may also include connective tissue diseases, okay, as in rheumatoid arthritis and in systemic lupus erythematosus. Felty syndrome is a triad of rheumatoid arthritis, neutropenia, and splenomegaly. I, as you can see right here, represents infiltrative disorders like amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, Gaucher's disease, lymphoma, leukemia, metastasis, and myeloproliferative as well as splenic malignancies. C denotes congestion. So this is caused by splenic or hepatic or portal hypertension, in other words, obstruction, which can be seen in conditions like congestive heart failure, cirrhosis, or constrictive pericarditis. And lastly, the H would represent hemolysis, which highlights that is uh, the workload hypertrophy the spleen experiences during increased breakdown of the red blood cells. 
So splenomegaly presents a spectrum of clinical manifestation, often reflecting the underlying cause of the condition, right? Symptoms can range from those directly linked to cytopenia, such as anemia, bleeding tendencies, and susceptibility to infections due to the inappropriate distraction of blood cells, as in hypersplenism. Additionally, individuals may also experience abdominal pain, discomfort, or tenderness. Splenomegaly may also be seen on physical exam. Furthermore, splenomegaly can contribute to early satiety, leading to unintended weight loss and reduced appetite, thereby impacting overall health and well-being. The evaluation of splenomegaly begins with identifying the underlying cause, which is very important, and then supported by a comprehensive physical examination that may actually uncover signs such as splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, skin rashes, lymphoadenopathy, jaundice, febrile states, and symptoms that are related to the root condition. Essential laboratory tests including a full blood count or a complete blood count, peripheral blood smear, blood cultures, liver function tests, haptoglobin levels, and HB electrophoresis also provide critical insights. Serological studies is also crucial when infections like infectious mononucleosis or hepatitis are suspected. In certain cases, a biopsy of the bone marrow or lymph node or splenic lesions may also be necessary. Imaging studies including ultrasound, CD scan, MRI, PET scans, and the chest x-rays are indispensable tools in the evaluation process. Exploratory laparoscopy or laparotomy might also be considered in specific instances to further investigate the condition and nuclear scans may also be useful. The treatment of splenomegaly focuses primarily on addressing the underlying cause of the condition, which is essential for effective management. It is crucial to avoid vigorous and traumatic activities to prevent the risk of splenic rupture and ensuring patient safety. Additionally, immunizations, particularly against encapsulated organisms, play a vital role in reducing the risk of severe infections or even sepsis. In specific circumstances, a splenectomy may also be considered as a treatment option to manage the condition effectively, highlighting the importance of a tailored approach to care. Thank you, and I hope this was useful. If you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Bye.